you know, I did get kind of bored with just tech for the sake of tech, but I've been needing a nice tiny computer and it, I became obsessed with these new tiny computers. There's a bunch of them out. And this one surprised me. This is the B-Link GTR7. Now you can get it with the Ryzen 9 7940. That'd be the uh, GTR7 Pro. But this one only has the Ryzen 7. And I say only because it surprised me at what it could do. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring. When you go and buy a regular key from Microsoft, it's not $22.54. And in fact, right now there's a mid-year mid sale, plus we have the 25% off with the coupon code TS25. So you're gonna get some money off of this as well. When you go and buy Windows 10 Pro or Home, uh, Windows 10, I believe, still activates Windows 11. So we've got Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. If you get an OEM key, the way it works is you're expected to do your own tech support. That's one of the reasons why the price is lower, but we all do our own tech support anyway, right? Then that key is technically locked to your hardware. You could buy like 10 of these keys for the price of a retail key. So I'll just buy another one the next time I move somewhere else. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, then you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So that's why I use Who Keys. Now, I'll tell you how big it is first. 6.61 inches by 4.72 inches by 1.92 inches. Now, normally I would go through all the specs right now, but before I do any of that, I want to give you a couple of benchmarks. All right, so here's my handbrake score. This is what I'm talking about. It kind of shocked me. I didn't expect a mini PC to be faster than any Threadripper, even the old original Threadripper. It's not going to be faster than the brand new Threadrippers, but that's pretty respectable performance. So I was like, okay, this is nice because now I can use it to render. So this is what I do. I've got it set up to use remote desktop and I'm rendering in the background. It's just rendering one of the Game of Thrones. I'm on season two right now. All right, so here's the settings. Just doing an AV1. You can look at all the stuff on the screen there. And this is on my beefy computer. One hour, 52 minutes to, to do an episode in AV1. Scroll down and see this computer, the little computer. Two hours and 33 minutes and 39 seconds. That's not a big difference. I've got a 5950X, which is a much bigger, beefier CPU. So this is what, this really shocked me. I can queue up like 20 things and just let them render overnight. And each one's gonna take a little bit more time when compared to my big rig, but it's saving a lot of power. You know, I can game on my main rig without having to render at the same time. And if I wanna game on the little PC, which I've been doing a lot of, I can just pause this. All right, now let's go through the specs and then we're gonna talk about gaming. And I'm gonna talk a lot about gaming. Let's look at the front. You got a power button and a clear CMOS button. Then we have USB 4 and then Type-C. Type-C is generally 3.2 on this. And we have headphone mic combo port on the front. You also have another one on the back. Thank you so much, B-Link, for putting one on the back. On top of the unit, we have a fingerprint scanner, but it's also another power button. So you can just come up with all the scenarios where that may be useful, having a power button in a different spot that's also a fingerprint scanner. On the bottom, you'll notice we have a magnetic power supply. Now this does a couple things. For one, it's really sleek and it uh, saves a little bit of room for ports on the back. Plus, it's also a way to really tightly connect your PC to the power adapter. I think the downside to this is it's not quite as universal. You can get replacements for these, but it's just not as standard as some other things. Now, we have four display options, and you can do three at the same time. You've got DisplayPort. You've got the USB 4 that will also do DisplayPort. You have HDMI. Now, the DisplayPort will do 4K at 120 hertz or 165 hertz at 1440p. Now on the back, we have USB 2. I kind of like that they included USB 2, but that's a whole topic for another video. And then you can see there we have some more USB 4. We got the USB-C 3.2, HDMI DisplayPort. Now you'll notice that we have two Ethernet ports on the back, and those are not gigabit. That's actually Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, the Intel i225V. Now you can check it out right there, 2.5 gigabits. And one thing I'll note is you want to probably come over here go to the properties and just turn on jumbo packets you can turn them up here this is going to be supported on just about all the hardware out there but make sure it's turned on on your router and on all your other devices to fully take advantage of this but this can speed things up a little bit when it comes to moving around large files which is kind of what i'm doing with this the audio ports on the front and the back are both combo ports for headphone and mic taking off the back's really easy there's just some screws here yeah and then you grab this little tab and pull got one tiny screw right here so the M.2, it's PCI Express Gen 4 by 4. You can get some really fast stuff going on there. This unit that I have came equipped with 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz uh, DDR5. You can just replace that with regular laptop memory. And then we have two spots for M.2. So you can expand if you wanted to add some extra storage. And you can even swap out your Wi-Fi right there. We've got an M.2 form factor Wi-Fi. And that's a 2230 
in there already, but you can swap that out so that'll help to future proof this. So yeah, you've got plenty of options here when it comes to adding additional you know, storage, upgrading your RAM, but this one is totally fine for me the way it is. If I wanted to install a bunch of games on here and have this to, you know, like a portable device, I might add an extra M.2 in, but I'm just going to be playing most of my games straight off the NAS. So on the inside, it stays really quiet. Even while it's rendering, it's probably one of the quietest systems that I've heard. We've got a, a big, like, I guess not really a heat pipe system, but a big metal cooling unit. Um, and on top of that, we have a system fan that also will provide cooling for your M.2. So you're cooling everything in there and it stays relatively quiet, like extremely quiet. If you're gaming, I, I don't hear it. Uh, rendering, if my computer's not on and nothing else is happening in the room, I can hear it a little bit. Using my decimal meter just standing in the room, it registers 60 decibels. Now, three feet away, when the unit is 100% and it's been running for a little while, it goes up to about 80 decibels. I was saying 80 and 81. So you're getting an extra 20 decibels at three feet away. Sitting back on the couch, uh, it was a few decibels lower than that, but you can still hear it because it's at a high pitch sound. Now for me, it's not that big of a deal because I still can't hear it even when it's ramped up when my computer is going on, if I'm using my headphones or if the AC's on. So just take that into account. If you're going to be taxing the CPU while also using it and sitting very close, you will hear that high pitched uh, sound. It's not too loud, but you'll hear it. The Radeon 780M, that's got four gigabytes of memory on that. I played a lot of games on this and it, it works so well that it spawned an idea. I'm going to do the next video, uh, like the top 10 or maybe 20 modern games that you can play on a mini PC or a laptop with similar specs to this. Because you can play a lot of modern games on this and there's a lot of really awesome games that people may miss because they're so focused on the crazy graphics AAA games. But games like the new Amnesia work amazingly well on this. I was surprised. I would, it runs great, 1080p. And I was running most things on medium, but I thought it looked pretty good. Then I decided to play um, an older game that I missed a couple years ago, but it still has crazy graphics and that's Detroit Become Human. Playing this a little bit because I'm sort of doing some research when it comes to adventure games since I'm working on one, but I hadn't played this yet and I really intended to and I ended up sitting on the couch for a couple hours playing this because it was a lot of fun and it worked really well on this. Now I was stubborn and kept the graphics on the highest setting because I wanted to see everything and this game has quick time events but it doesn't really require a lot of twitch you know, speed or anything like that. It's not an FPS or a competitive game. I probably should have turned a couple of things down but it worked completely fine. And after I play this video, I'm going to go back and play some more Detroit Become Human because it seems like it's going to be an interesting game asking some questions about what is personhood. And I think that's relevant today. It also looks better than I remember or better than I thought it would look. System Shock, another brand new game that just came out uh, recently. It runs really, really well on this if you set it to medium. So I'm running at 1080p and medium and yeah, this game's a little slower as far as like the, the pacing of the game goes, but it has awesome mood. Uh, really nice lighting and, and it's one of the okay this game was made originally by Warren Spector and his team before they made Deus Ex so you'll start to see some of the fingerprints that made up my favorite game of all time Deus Ex in this original game but it's an immersive sim so you really get the feel for this station it has a mood that's it's it's very unique to itself cyberpunk but there's it's also you know there's something special about it. So I recommend System Shock for, for systems like this. Okay, I also wanted to try Street Fighter VI. That's been sort of a fascination lately. I didn't realize it was a huge RPG, but it's like now become one of my favorite JRPGs of all time because I like 2D combat and I don't like JRPG combat. So this works. It's zany, it's ridiculous, and it has really fun combat if you like Street Fighter combat. But they also have a modern control scheme if you're someone out there who's, you know, looked at this and been like, ah, how can, I, how can I play that? It's I can't do all those moves. Well, it's got a modern control scheme that's very similar to Smash or Smash Brothers or whatever it is, where you just hold certain directions and push buttons to do the special moves. So don't be scared. It's, it's very accessible and it's a lot of fun. So take a look at Street Fighter VI. Playing it on this, however, was weird because in the open world, you can run around and it's silky smooth. But whenever you enter into a fight, it starts to go a little bit slow like it's almost perfect almost playable but even turning turning it down to 720p it still was sluggish so i don't know what's going on there what's what the difference is but i think it's something up with the game itself because even at 1080p it's buttery smooth running around in the game world it's just the switch from that to fighting kills the frame rate so 
I don't know if it's the DRM that they installed or what, but yeah. Anyway, we do have a link to get that game on Green Man Gaming because they hooked me up with it and I didn't expect that it was going to take over half my life. So yeah, cool. All right, now I want to talk about emulators because I wanted something in the living room that, that is powerful enough to play all the old games with CRT filters. That's really important because without CRT filters, it just does not feel like the original games. It doesn't look right. It, it just something it just doesn't feel right so i always play with crt filters and the really good ones are kind of heavy kind of expensive to run so i was playing this with the mega bezel project which you'll have when you just download retroarch if you go into your shaders put it on vulcan put your thing on vulcan go into shader slang go down to mega bezel and then you have tons of presets now the one that i really like was an easy mode preset and i'll put that on the screen so you can see which one it was it makes your tv look more like a crt it's not going to have the same fluidity of motion, but it goes a long way to making it look less like, you know, the pixely blocky stuff and more like the dots that were displayed on the, the original hardware. I decided to play the GameCube first because that one I figured would, would tax it a little bit with the CRT filters. And, you know, you've got to fast forward whenever you're playing a Zelda game, you got to fast forward for two hours to get through all the introductory dialogue, watch all their goofy animations going back and forth. But this one ran amazingly well and Wind Waker looks awesome because you can turn up the, the resolution on this. It looks better than it did on the original hardware. And I actually like the way the GameCube version looks better than the HD remake. So I, I prefer to play this version with, you know, a little bit of stuff turned up, some graphics turned up, and the, um, of course, the CRT filters. But I think it looks great and it's a buttery smooth. Checked out Dragon Slayer on the TurboGrafx-16. That plays great, but I mean, of course it would. It just looks great, plays great. And, you know, of course, tried out some arcade games. So yeah, all the emulators worked really well. And I love the fact that the CRT filters don't cause slowdown. Some of the ridiculous CRT filters that have like 50 layers of effects going on, they cause some slowdowns, but even those are kind of difficult to run with my ridiculous graphics card on my other PC. So, so all in all, there's, I mean, there's not really much I would change. I would just, if it was bigger and had a, a GPU, that would be cool. But in this size and this power draw, it doesn't really get much better. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some stuff that's negative, but it's it's difficult because it really checks all my boxes. Again, the only thing would be if it was bigger and had a GPU, but that would be a different computer and not this one. So I'm really, really happy with this B-Link. There's a link in the description to check it out. It's brand new, so so let me know what you think in the, in the comments. Maybe you'd even use this thing as a server because it's so powerful and has two 2.5 gigabit NICs on the back. I want to mention also this one did come with Windows 11, but I've sort of installed my own version on top of it. I always move it around and change it up so that it works and functions and looks better. This is my Windows 11 here. I've got it looking like this. So, oh, I better turn on those Jimbo packets. But yeah, it's just rendering stuff right now. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I'm just kind of hanging out. Be sure to watch for the next video where I talk about modern games that are really good to play on hardware like this. So I'll see you then. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, head over to epicpants.com. Since we're all gaming on the couch, we're going to do 30% off on all of our controllers with the coupon code take control over at epicpants.com. So 35% off right here. I'll see you on Epic Pants and I'll see you in the comments.